The year is 2025, and the NBA landscape has changed. LeBron James is now retired. James Harden is now retired. Kevin Durant, he is now retired. And now we're on to a new era of basketball. LaMelo Ball is now the MVP of the league. Bronny James just finished his rookie year. And rookie Marty Brooks, Marty Brooks wins sixth man of the year. And Giannis still in his 20s in 2025 wins defensive player of the year look at those stats 28 16 and 6. zion storm just finished his rookie year as well he only averaged 4.3 points though because he was backing up trey young on the atlanta hawks and he is pretty far in the depth chart but averaging four points his first year i think he can get better from here Wendell Caesar did not play at all for the Sacramento Kings. He This was his second year in the NBA, and he didn't play pretty much at all. He's just a bench guy. So welcome back to the Long Beach State Dynasty. Here we are in the offseason, and we come with great news already. We will accept the invitation. Moving on to the Pac-12 has been long awaited, and now we will look to a new era of basketball here as we made it to the Final Four. But more surprising news, more guys go pro. And this was no surprise, to be honest. I don't think this was any surprise. I don't know what I'm talking about. Douglas Taylor was very good. I definitely expected him to probably go to the league because he just has that versatility and the athleticism. James Quick, I definitely thought he would go. And Monsetti had a monster year scoring. He might as well go while his stock is hot. So where do our guys go in the draft? James Quick ends up going number seven overall after that tournament run to the Orlando Magic. And that's a great spot for him. He will definitely take over and hopefully be a potential franchise piece for them. And his evaluation says Jonathan Isaac is, impending, is an impending free agent and he will probably not re-sign. And James Quick might be the long-term answer for the Orlando Magic. Douglas Taylor goes number 22 in the first round. He goes to the Toronto Raptors. I'm happy to see him go to a situation where he's not given the high expectations. He's gonna be definitely a developmental guy, but look at uh, his draft analysis, a 43 inch vertical at the draft com combine. Scouts were wowed by Douglas Taylor's athleticism. That was no surprise to us. We saw how he blocked that Kentucky guy shot on that dunk. I think that definitely put him on the map. Tony Monsetti was a little older in this draft, but he still goes number 27 at the end of the first round to the Atlanta Hawks. So he will play with Zion Storm for the Hawks. And he goes number 27. He isn't the fastest player or the strongest player or the best shooter. But his well-rounded game was good enough to catch the attention of NBA scouts. I think this is a good spot for him to land in the first round. So three guys go in the draft. And now we move on to the offseason officially. And for the first time, we now have interest with some major players this season. Now, Reggie Houston, remember, he already committed to our school. He is actually the highest ranked guy to ever commit to our school, 138 Number 31 as a small forward. He's six foot six. His outside game is a B. Inside game is a B minus. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do on the squad. But we do have interest from some McDonald's All Americans, starting with Dan Welch. He is the number 13 ranked guy in the nation right now. Now, these are ratings adjust based on if other guys commit. So he's probably moved up. Originally, I believe he was in the 60s. And then Theo York is also a McDonald's All-American, but he is not playing in this game. I'm not sure why he's not, even though he's a McDonald's All-American. I think it's because they had other McDonald's All-Americans in this game before uh, they committed, and then they obviously go off the board after they commit to their school. So let's check out a couple of guys. Now, Wood is interested in coming to us. Now, I want to scout him, though, because I'm not really sure what type of game he has. And also, I can see the ratings in this game. So... When I'm playing this game, this is the only time I get to see ratings of uh, recruits in high school. And I looked at uh, Wood, and he's not that impressive. So I'm not really going to truly go after him unless he shows me what he can do. But let's check out Dan Welch. I mean, he's interested in us. I'm interested in him. And here he is posted up, and he does a little fade away from the free throw line. That one gets his first bucket of the game. And here is Wood again. Let's see what he can do with the ball. He gets ripped. 
and I don't like that because I want a guy who can handle the ball, and he gives up a transition dunk as well. But I am interested in Welch, so we'll see if we go after him. Here is Wood, one more floater. He gets that one to go. Welch actually finishes with 14.7 assists in this game. Wood actually finished with about eight points, and I think he had two rebounds or something like that. So Dan Welch is going to be the top-rated guy on our board. He's six foot seven. He's a power forward. I don't know much about him right now, but we will obviously scout him. I do plan on doing a little video on how to recruit in this game. It's, you know, not hard, but it's also not easy depending on like what school you have. But you can just see he has every single accolade to his name. He's a really good player. Now, Theo York is second on our board. I like Theo York, mainly because, you know, he's, he's a good scorer, 11.9, but he also does it all. 3.6 blocks, 5.8 rebounds, over two steals, everything he does well. He's very strong. It looks like he enjoys lifting weights, and it shows. And he's actually not a bad athlete for being, you know, 6'10", 220 pounds. So he will get the scholarship offer from us right away. Now, the next guy I want to go after here is Grant Holland. Very, very good shooter. 56% in high school. But look at these numbers. 18.5 points, 13.3 assists per game, shooting over 50%. I mean, goodness. I mean, that guy is amazing. I'm definitely going after him. He's six foot, so he will mainly play a kind of a gom combo guard type of uh you know feel for him but i don't really know because obviously we have michael workman on our roster we have nick miles and those two guys probably will be the main point guards so we'll see what he does if he does commit to our school but we're number one usually when you're number one on somebody's board it's not hard to get them they usually will commit now bill coker is the next guy on our uh, on our list but he can't really shoot threes he's only shooting eight percent from three-point land so right now i'm just gonna send him a letter of interest see what i get out of him i'm not extremely interested right now but we'll have to see the main thing with guards is that i do want shooting and joe sullivan can shoot he's almost averaging a double double shooting over 50 percent as well and i only go after guys that are interested in us now i used to restrict it so that it's only the west coast but now i'm gonna open it up we're we're a final four team now we don't have the shackles on us we can go anywhere and that brings us to our next guy here, a Juco junior point guard, Peter Thomas. I like this because I do want more depth on this squad, and it's going to be important because now that we start to get these, you know, high recruits, we're going to have some one and duns. We're going to have some two and duns. You saw we had three guys go pro this year, and we had to account for possibly losing guys. So getting Juco guys that are just veterans, it could pay off for us. Peter Thomas is very good. I'm going to plan on offering him a scholarship if all goes right and we have the depth on our squad. Now let's look at some more forwards here. Dante Hutchins, 15 points per game, six rebounds as well. Only shooting 7% from three. That definitely worries me. I'm not going to go after him right now. We're third on his list and he's looking at UNC Asheville as well. Then we move on to the big men. How about Leon Franklin? We are first on his list. That is good, but he shoots 14% from three. As of center, that's very, very good. That's actually a pretty unorthodox number in these in recruiting, especially going after a center. And he shoots better than the fours that I've seen. So I'm going to go after him. I'm, I'm wondering if he will commit. I do like his potential, obviously, as a 6'10 center. Going to be pretty good going after these centers. We have a couple more guys on the board. John Dennison is left. He is a small forward, 16 points per game, six foot five. I I want to scout him a little more, see what he can do. But right now he's on our board. Then Nick Day is the last guy. He is only a one star, 1,300 ranked, but he's a shooter, so I'm wondering what his shooting will be like. So now we advance on to see who does commit to the school. Dan Welch goes to Oklahoma, so he will go and sign with them. But Theo York, we get our first McDonald's All-American. He commits to the squad. Welcome to LBSU, along with Grant Holland, who I really, really liked in recruiting this year. Six-foot guard and can shoot the lights out. I'm excited to see what he can do. Bill Coker actually moves on to sign with a different school. I don't know what FDF, FDU is. I can't even think of who that is. Sullivan moves on to Texas. I'm very, very sad about that because... It would have been nice to have another guard that can shoot as well. Sullivan was shooting over 50%. But 
Furious Kessler. I love that name. He goes on to play for BYU. I was going after him. Didn't really highlight him too much. But Peter Thomas does commit, so I do have that depth at guard. And we have more scholarships open now that we have three guys going pro. So we do have a couple more left. And I do decide to look at another guy here, Ty Mills. He is very, very fast. Looks like he's an average rebound rebounder, but a 6'9 small forward. I got to take that potential. I got to run with that. So I'm going to offer him a scholarship. I'm going to go after him. Very, very intriguing because of his size and his speed. And John Dennison, we move on, and he does commit to our school, LBSU. That is a good sign. And Ty Mills also commits. So those are our last two recruits. We add them. They also, all of our recruits will be renamed to you guys. You guys submitted about a few days ago, and I will have that filled out here in this at the end of this episode. So we go on to preview next season. We are number 25 in the nation preseason ranked. The first time we are ranked in this series. We are A minus B plus recruits, A minus starters, B plus bench as well. We will need it going into the Pac-12. And going into training, I really, really want to focus on just getting better as a whole. I definitely want my front court to be more of the defense and the conditioning. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make it so that they're all around my front, my backcourt. I just made it so that it's mostly shooting. I want to make sure they're good offensive players and have my front court be, you know, the anchors of the team having good defensive prowess. And I want to focus on the starters mainly. So that's how we will divvy up the training. So for the third straight year, we have another preseason invite. This one to the big boy, the Maui Invitational. I'm so excited for that. And we open up our season versus Alabama and Tennessee. We get the rematch with the national champs who we lost to in the final four. That's going to be very, very interesting. And then the Maui Invitational kicks off with Ohio State, number nine in the country. And we also play Oakland, who's number 24 in the country. Later in the season, close to Christmas, we will also play Duke. And then we will move on to play the Pac-12 schedule. Pac-10 in this game, but I'm going to call them the Pac-12 while we're in this series. And they have we have a few ranked teams in this conference. And like I said, your recruits will be renamed to a lot of guys in the conference as well as some guys on my team. So let's just look at the final roster. This is after training. So these ratings are final here. Solomon Teixeira will get the start full time at center. I think I'm going to have William Caesar come off the bench his senior year. I liked what he did, just giving us energy. So I'm going to go with that this year, even though he's rated higher than Teixeira. Now, the McDonald's All-American Theo York is renamed to Josie McKay, a very, very good, well-rounded player. I did not see this in recruiting. I didn't think that he would be this good. Defensive rebounds at 89. He's a 98 defensive rating, 84 on offense, and he also can shoot the three. I mean, look at our starting lineup. We can all shoot threes. 81 three-pointer for him. He's going to be fun. I, I kind of compare him to Kevin Love plus defense because Kevin Love wasn't known as a defensive player. And I think that he can shoot just like him. It's going to be fun. Tamir Macklin returns for his senior year. I was actually thinking that he was going to go pro, but he actually returns. But the three point goes up to 94. He's going to be a lot of fun to play with this year. I'm guessing that he might be our leading scorer. Now, Justin Johnson, the freshman who was Grant Holland, he actually commits to us and he ends up being very, very good. 98 offensive ability, 91 on defense. He's also a 91 passer as well. But the best part, 94 three-pointer. I mean, our, our backcourt is going to be so good at shooting the basketball. Now, right now, I'm going to have Nick Miles as the starter. And mainly because I like what Workman brings off the bench. He runs the second unit better than probably Nick Miles would because of his defense. I can kind of hide Nick Miles on defense in my starting lineup. But, I mean, if I have him coming off the bench, I don't really have a guy that can lock up at point guard except, except Kerry R. Walker. He can play some point guard too. But, like I said, I don't do manual subs. I let it auto sub. So, I do want it to be like this for now. And Michael Workman will come off the bench. He's coming off of an injury going into a junior year. Very good passer. Very good shooter. Very good everything. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in his third season with the squad. William Caesar, like I said, will come off the bench. He is 80 overall. He will actually play quite a bit because I know how the auto subs work. They usually just factor in 
overall. So right now, Teixeira is the starter. William Caesar will probably sub in quite a bit early on. Six foot seven going into his senior year. Gary R. Walker still will have a big role off the bench going into his sophomore year. I'm hoping that, you know, he can really play defense on the, off the bench. 99 defensive ability. That's going to be quite the kind of trait to have with this squad because we have the scoring. Now we need the defense. We got to do that. Now, Tyrus Danks, I thought was going to have a much better three-point shot because he was kind of a higher-rated guy last year, but he will still play coming off the bench the ninth spot on the bench there and then steve jenkins was our first uh recruit this year he gets renamed to steve jenkins he's gonna be very good 99 defense i don't know what's up with this but our defense is gonna be very very good this year but steve jenkins is 99 defense and 99 offense it's like man it's damned if you do damn you don't i mean honestly macklin is ahead of him and he's the future hopefully he does not transfer because he's on the bench but I, I like Macklin in his senior year. I mean, he is just a lights-out shooter. He can also play defense and offense as well. Jenkins does need to work on that three-point shot, though. It's at 71 right now. Ronnie Badoki is 11th coming off the bench. He will play quite a bit, actually, because he is the second big man off the bench. And then Blaine Ashley as well. So the Juco point guard that we did recruit gets renamed to Casper Harris. Six-foot guard um, actually is kind of just well-rounded and very, very good and versatile. And then there's Ace Jenkins, six foot five forward. This was Dennison who we recruited. Very good player. I mean, all around just a good player. And I like the depth of this squad now. We have no more guys that are like rated like in the 60s or 50s. Everybody's good now. And that's gonna be kind of something that's different. And then as I say that, I have a 68 overall guy, Robinson Doubleday. I love that name. I gotta admit, you guys have were creative during all your submissions. I thank you for that. And if you did not make the squad, you will be renamed. I will try to get everybody renamed to the rest of the conference. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I have, what is it, eight, nine teams to rename there. That's, it's gonna take a while, a little bit. So I'm gonna get that done. Um, I don't know if you guys saw my community tab post this morning, but something happened with my Coco Beach series. The PS2 just absolutely died, so I will be discontinuing that series. So we will have to see what happens here in season number six. You're going to see this series pretty heavy now. So now we're number 25. I'm excited to see what we can do in this Pac-12 conference. I mean, a lot of potential with this squad. The freshman McDonald's All-Americans, our first one. Guys going pro. A lot happened in this episode. So hit that like button. Thank you guys for watching this series. I'm looking forward to season number six. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Back again like flu season. I broke records while loose leaf and I'm coming now on my roof leaving. Don't give a f I don't care. Uh did the f but my lonesome. No wonder now I'm on one. No shortcuts on that long run. All I really want is my share. Uh get on my